But moving on to the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and skip the program um, a little bit. We're going to move to a fun part. Listen, In The Mix has their first on-live guest today, guys. We're getting into everything. Mary to Madison, okay? Mary to Madison has been ruling the social media streets since the season 10 premiere. And they have not been missing a beat with all of the drama. This most recent episode saw the um, wedding between Sweet Tea and Dr. Gregory Lunsford play out with some drama going on with our girl, Dr. Heavenly, down to who is allowed to get in, whose name has been taken off. And so I said, you know, why not go to the source? <laughs> You know, why not go to the source? Why not go the one to who the started source? all this shit? The one who started all this stuff, okay? Um, today we have, I'm just gonna bring him up, Johnny. Johnny Winston join us. Y'all have seen Johnny Winston many a times on Bravo, honey. Down to the places with the people we've seen on Real Housewives of Atlanta and most recently on a recent episode of Marriage Medicine, um, where he was the planner behind Sweet Tea's wedding. Everybody in the mix, welcome Johnny to our Show, up, Johnny? Up, Johnny? How's it going? What's going on, Johnny? Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> see, look, this whole episodes and everything. Um, see, I didn't know how everything was playing out. Okay, so we shoot different scenes. Um, of course, the show edits however they want to edit. Oh, Johnny, you just jump right on in it. I know that's right. The show, the show edits how it want to edit. So people see different things in different aspects. And sometimes things are filmed out of order or into, uh, as I know that's right, because you're a journalist. (laughs) 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 Um, Well, I'll pause. I'll let you ask the questions and then I'll jump back in. (laughs) No. Okay. So, okay, Johnny, tell us, how did you get involved with this season of Married to Medicine? Um, of course, the last time a lot of us saw you was back on Housewives. We'll use season nine with the whole thing with Phaedra, who is now on Married to Medicine, and um, of course, our girl Candy. And now you're over here on Married to Medicine this season, where Phaedra is back, and now you're in this wedding and all this mess is going on. And our girl, Heavenly, was locked out of the wedding. She could not get in. Johnny, you was the man in charge that day. What happened? So. Um... I don't know what transpired between the ladies. Um, So whatever transpired between Sweet Tea and Heavily, I received a message that morning that said that um, an email and messages went out um, to inform Heavily and her team that they are no longer wanted at Sweet Tea's wedding. And I also received a text message from Sweet Tea that says, do not let Heavily in. Um, But it says, if she manages to get in, (laughs) don't make a a big scene because she'll deal with it um, because she wanted peace for that day. So something drastic had transpired um, prior. Now, um, what they went through, the maid of honor, um, Jasmine um, Garad is the one who informed Sweet Tea what was said behind her back when Sweet Tea went to the restroom at the bachelorette party. And so Jasmine told Sweet Tea what happened. And so Sweet Tea was like, you know what? I'm not I'm not having it. It's my day. So that's where that first round of stuff came in. Now, <laughs> they put me on the spot to go to Heavenly <laughs> to say, let her know that she was not on the list. And so Heavenly couldn't believe that she wasn't on the list. <laughs> She didn't want to read. The e- she didn't want to believe the email and the text message that she received was accurate. So <laughs> she just knew that. Well, since they, um, her husband and Greg are friends, that they on the list. Mm. So when they got there, they were sadly mistaken. And so they called me on walkie. It was like, "Hey, Johnny, there's a situation at the uh, check-in. Can you go upstairs?" <laughs> And I went running up the stairs and I'm like, she was like, okay, well, are we all, she was like, are we all, are we on the list or not? I'm like, well, the bride said, I was informed <laughs> that the bride did not want you here. Dang. And she didn't know how to take that. So how do we go from 
her not being on the list or her uh, be bopping her way down the aisle, I guess, managing to get in as you uh, so, mentioned. Before. So um, <laughs> Bravo asked me to run something, uh, run the marriage certificate in, right? Um, to distract me so that the producers could slide her in through the back. So that's why uh, my team, um, they was like, they put, they tried to hit me on walk. He said, hey, they let um, her in. I said, well, don't let her go past the second row in the back. So that's why when they came in, they couldn't go but to the back, the last two rows, because all the other cast was seated closer to the front, behind the families. This sounds like something this like- was after the wedding already started. Because when I do, just in general, <laughs> whether it's televised or not, when a ceremony has started, I don't let anybody in. Because you're a professional. Across the board. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't let anybody in. I don't, I'm sorry if it's auntie, uncle, whatever. Everybody had the same exact time to be at the wedding. If there were some discrepancies of you getting in, I'm sorry. You're going to have to wait to cocktail out to deal with it. But that's what I was wondering because from watching it, I couldn't tell if it was clipped. Like, you know, she walked in while it was already going on, or if she really did walk in while it was already yeah. going on. She walked in while it was going on, and Sweet T did that look down the aisle like, really? <laughs> like, this bitch just really just came in? <laughs> but it was nothing that could be done at that moment, so she had to focus on what was in front of her, which was her husband-to-be. So, okay, Johnny, I want to go back a little bit before we get into, like, more Merit to Madison stuff. And I'm going to say, you didn't let me answer the, how I end up on this season. So I Yeah, was no, I was just about to ask you, because <laughs> okay. the, last time, the last time we saw you, Johnny, and I'm just going to say it how the majority of the people, you know, okay. say it. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm just watching what's on the TV screen, okay? And we are a candy-coated nation over here, okay? We's a candy-coated nation. So the last time that people saw you was, you know, you was caught up. In the rapture with Phaedra and, and, and Candy, because you were saying that Candy had done worked you like a slave, man. Phaedra stole your idea. And the people was like, oh, Johnny not professional. We don't want to work with him. Da, 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 da. And now Johnny's back working with the people down to Merit to Medicine. So take us through us mm -hmm. the world first meeting you in that capacity. What life was like during that time and how you ended back working with Sweet Tea on Merit to Medicine? What well, so here's the thing: what the people have to understand, un, un contrary to interviews that was put out by Ms. Burris, um, that I was told back then when she said that she created me. You can't create something that was already established. I've never spoke on interviews that was put out prior. I was celebrating my tenth anniversary in business at the time of her wedding. That's why I was chosen. It wasn't that I was a random person or that was I was just in her camp. I was already in business. This next year will be my 20th anniversary in business. So I've been in entertainment since 2009, and I've met Phaedra way back in 2009. Um, that whole scene or episode, I didn't even know they were filming in her office. I literally went to her office um, that day just for legal advice. Because I already had, you know, as a Morehouse man, I keep all my documents together. Johnny, you went to Morehouse? I did. You know? I did. You, you graduated from Morehouse? In 2009, I did. Yes. Oh, Johnny. So, <laughs> so as a Morehouse man, we keep all of our documents and stuff together. We're very tight and we don't play any games. So I didn't know if they just thought that I was young at the time and I didn't have all my stuff in order, but I kept everything in order. Hence why I handed my attorneys a binder full of everything that they needed and why we went through with our case and, and settled what we need to sell. But tell us, <laughs> but, but like, but tell us, mm -mm, but tell us like, <laughs> listen, listen, Johnny, listen, you know, I'm, no ma'am, no ham. Johnny, I'm gonna be straight up with you. You know, That's I'm cool. listen, and, and honestly, for real, for real, let me stop. Cause I'm gonna joke mm -hmm. a little bit, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, you know, in, mm -hmm. in talking about this, I'm also gonna let people tell a story because none of us would dare. And mm -hmm. honestly, you know, I'll just say, this is reality TV. This is like the NFL to me. You know, fuck it. You know, like, this is just, you know, mm -hmm. some bullshit. I just want to say I am a candy-coated nation, all right? So don't be coming over here trying to tell me up and thinking you, I'm going to let it go. You, you entitled to be whoever you want to be. But until you was in my position, in my shoes Definitely. at that time, I worked for an individual for four and a half years running their empire. There were times where y'all see them on different trips, like the ski trip and everything. They made calls to the studio. Who was at the studio running it? Me. Right. I'm just saying when people try to document and stuff and I was labeled as the assistant, which I never was her assistant. It was supposed to be Carmen. Every time you saw 
she out at places, you saw myself with her. Don Juan and Carmen wasn't always with her. That's how I got labeled as the assistant because they always saw us together at places versus the people that were supposed to be there with her. So I was initially hired as the studio manager. That's all I was supposed to do was run the candy factory. But when they found out that I could do multiple things, all those other titles just started coming, but wasn't trying to add onto it with the dollar signs. And I would paper trail, email, ask, okay, where are we at with this? Why, why hasn't this increased? I would constantly keep all of my documents together and asking, where is this going at? So, Johnny, you have a very nice beard. I just want to let you know that. It's like very moist and like shiny and healthy looking. <laughs> I really like it. No, I really do. Johnny, I want you to talk to us about like mm -hmm. what was life for you working in Atlanta once all that stuff started. So like talk to me like, okay, so like mm -hmm. of course people are talking about you guys' case online, da 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 da. But like how how was your business affected, if at all, um during that my time before we see you now back on Merity Medicine? My business was never affected. Um so what people don't understand, um uh, working in industry. I, what I do outside of everything, I do work um, as a talent dressing room manager for different award shows. So I've done the Grammys, the Stellars, the Dove, the BET Awards, the Hip Hop Awards, and just recently the Griot Awards. So there's a lot of shows under my belt outside of reality. So that's my other lane. So I don't just do, wed I have a lot of hats that I wear. So besides weddings and catering and doing all those other things, I have a lot of hands in my pots in other places. So yeah. my business was never affected because as an entrepreneur, you already know how to solidify things. But my loyal clients always keep me booked and I have a lot of corporate um, contracts that's always going to be available. How did you get involved with this season of Merit to Medicine? So last year, um, actually before the filming even came into place, um, Sweet T um, saw my, my stuff online and she reached out and I met with her and Gregory. We met at the Starbucks on um, Cascade. And we went over a few items because it was close up the street from their house. Because um, at the time, you know, you don't just, you don't meet nobody and bring them straight to your house. Or I was just in the area <laughs> and she said she was having to grab something from Starbucks. So I was like, well, I can just pull up to the Starbucks. So I pulled up to the Starbucks and, you know, we just sat and we talked and she initially wanted a small intimate ceremony and she mentioned the Peace Street Club, uh, which is where the wedding was supposed to be at. So from that whole aspect of them at that point retaining me as a wedding planner and we, you know, orchestrating everything, everything was leading up until the Peace Street Club until four days before the wedding. Four days before the wedding is when everything had to completely change to the Starling Hotel. Wow. What happened? You, because what happened is the Peachtree Club would not let Bravo filmed at Peachtree Club because the Peachtree Club felt that um, there was going to be drama and it was going to be something that they didn't want their uh, facility displayed in a negative light because the Peachtree Club has memberships. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want the Peachtree Club to be portrayed in a negative light. So therefore, they rejected Bravo's um, clearance to film. So the network says, you know what, there is, this is non-negotiable. We have to film this wedding. So Sweet Team, like, well, y'all have to find another location. So <laughs> four days before the wedding, now, mind you, invitations have already went out. Everything has been solidified. Here we are in days planning the rehearsal, everything. And now you stick me four days before the wedding to figure out everything and change up everything. So the price, when people was asking what was the budget and how did the budget change, when you switch from a small intimate wedding that was just a rooftop, which would have not needed any drapes, any other specialty rooms, it would just been already set. <laughs> the ceremony would have been on the outside on the uh, rooftop at the Peachtree Club. And then the backdrop would have just been the city of Atlanta. You know, that like how Ben Thomas had that open view. So the Peachtree Club had that same aspect. When you go from doing a full ceremony ballroom, cocktail hour, and then down a rooftop reception in a hotel, that's three different areas. 
And when you have other vendors that were bringing in other items, that's a completely different change and shift from where they was already contract to bring in. And then your guest count increased from 100 people to almost 200. So when you bringing in more people, more design, more everything, that's why everything changed. So when I made that call, I'm like, listen, Bravo was supposed to pay a lot of stuff. It got to a point where Bravo was not paying for that. And I called T and I called Gregory. That um, I didn't know she was having a bachelorette party. I was calling as a planner. I'm like, look, this is a situation. I don't know. Who told you to call? Was you? No, you no, I, called, call? I called because I'm looking at the days and time. I had to send Gregory all of the receipts and things from Bravo. Not oh, I'm sorry. And, I, and I'm so sorry to cut you mm -hmm. off, but it didn't got to a good part that it made me lean in a little bit more. Okay. So, so you mean to tell me that the phone call you made was just you just calling? You just called? I called. Yes, I just called. No, I have another phone call that I actually have recorded when I actually called Gregory and we called and they, the ladies jumped online. I think she's still in the back, Dr. G. I'm waiting on her to get back on too. You see me? <laughs> That part was when Gregory said why he, why he went down to uh, when he went to figure out what was going on. That's before he even knew Quad was there. Uh, all of this stuff happened at random. I didn't even know one. The first thing I told her, why did you put our call on speaker? Now, I didn't know that she even had me on speaker when I called her initially about going over discuss because when I talked to my clients, it's just in confidentiality between my clients. So me seeing, you know, our phone call was on speaker. I was like, well, that wasn't a room conversation. So, of course, the ladies might have felt some type of way, but it wasn't a room conversation. It was when I'm calling you, I'm calling you. You know what I mean? So to see the conversation initially going in, they cut and edit some stuff. But, you know, to see the initial conversation was on, you know, on speaker, I thought that was kind of weird and odd. I don't know if somebody told her to put it on speaker and her sister was trying to get her attention to tell her, take it off speaker. That's where the initial tension came from her and her sister, because I'm texting at the time I'm texting her sister and I'm texting her maid of honor. Like we in a real life situation. Y'all wedding is about to be, you know, whoop de whoop because Bravo is trying to drop the ball on y'all. Bravo have not covered anything. And this is now at this point, it was almost two days before rehearsal and everything else at a whole new venue with things that was not covered. They didn't even know the menu choices until the day of the wedding because Bravo had to step in and handle all the other options. Well, John, let me ask you this question. How long does your confidentiality agreement last with your clients that you, that you, <laughs> that you have been talking about? I can see all of this stuff because these are, there's, there's no confidentiality agreement when it comes to- Oh, okay. To I got you. I got I you. Talk okay. about, I can talk about what was what was going on because it's, it's real life. It's not nothing that come out and say, oh, well, why you uh, said all that stuff? I can speak about that stuff freely. If it was something that I can't say, I would just, you know, say I, I can't speak to this or speak to that. But I can I can speak to what I can speak to. No, and you speaking, you speaking. Mm -hmm. we, go ahead, Darius. Who want another number? I can't and, reveal the and number. And what number is that? <laughs> okay. Darius, that's what I'm talking about. I can't reveal the number, but I will, I will say that. So the wedding wasn't i'm the, so sorry Darius. what number are you, are you referring to the budget I figure six figures are you, are you talking about the budget oh, for the, the, the wedding? wedding yeah no they they had a traditional wedding i would honestly if i had to guesstimate i don't know how much the starling charged because again that was a different ticket so i don't know all that stuff but i did know that they lost out on 20 plus from the peace street club because when you already had everything set, you can't get none of that back. Ooh. Because that was in days before the wedding, literally four days before the wedding. A venue that has held that date, has done everything, all the checklists, right. your food tasting, 
all of that stuff at, at one location, they're not going to give you anything back because you wasted their time. Yeah, for that. yeah. So they lost out on that. So I would say if I had to just guess, this is just a guess, I would say based on their loss and whatever Bravo made up, they may have spent about 70, if that. I'm just, I'm just estimating. I don't even know. It and that's including, less, that's so including way more, but I don't know. That's including the 14k you shook that down for the uh, that, two that, days. That, that, uh, that 14K, <laughs> we, actually, we, actually, we actually took off a lot of items from that 14k, so it didn't even be 14k. What we end up um, doing, we took off some stuff too, so we can meet them in the middle. Because that's my my goal is always a resolution. So yeah. I threw out what you, know, Leah, you better be looking for a resolution. Yeah. So <laughs> I threw out um, numbers of what they needed at that moment, but I also came back with solutions like, okay, if we take away this or if we repurpose or did something this, you can save on this and that. So I came back yeah. to help them cut that in half. So, so that's I, it. Yeah, so I only um, they only had to pay additional like seven thousand for additional furniture pieces and stuff, but it wasn't like the whole fourteen additional because I tried to make make it easy for clients, especially when they were dealing with the craziness with Bravo. And that's the thing what I tell people when you have televised weddings, and what people don't also know the same thing with Candy wedding. They uh, it her wedding had to change the week of the wedding as well. The wedding was supposed to be at the botanical gardens. We had to switch the wedding to Lafayette Doe the same week of the wedding. This is the second time that Bravo ended up having conflicts and, you know, you don't get clearance with filming that you have to switch. So are they not submitting the paperwork for the clearance early enough? Is that what it is? Well, I don't think that they are for a lot of stuff. You have to have location agreements and that's a, that's based down on location management. But I know the botanical gardens, they would not close down the park no matter how much money you were spending. That was the issue. So if you were spending almost 400K for a wedding and you still not exactly. closing down the park, why should I have my wedding here if you giving everybody still access to the park? That that didn't make any sense. You know? John, Johnny, did, did you get all your money from um the wedding? Yes. Everything okay, is whatever. everything is paid in full. We don't need you. We okay. No, we won't see no things with Phaedra. Talk about we don't need you. right. Okay, Phaedra, Phaedra is not married to me. That's Phaedra is not married to medicine. We don't Phaedra, need you running yeah, down to no. Um, that's the misconception. People thought that people thought that Phaedra represented me. Phaedra never right. represented me. Oscar Prelo and Lisa York Bowman were my attorneys. And they and they handle business. They handle business. They the stood right. on business. Standing on business. That's it. So, Johnny, I want to know from you, to wrap this all up, from you being there and then watching it back on television, of course, one of the main topics was heavily not being able to get in and mm -hmm. was able to get in. People were talking about the budget, the cost, how it looked, um, mm -hmm. your job performance. What is your reaction to some of the things that people have said about this wedding on social media? I, I, I never paid attention to what people have said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just focus on my next client. Um, if I if I have to sit and read every single comment that people say, what good does it do? I don't pay it no attention. It don't phase me none. I don't have a worry bone in my body. I know what I'm capable of doing, and I do, um, you know, what my clients expect of me. And as long as my clients are satisfied, then I can care less what anybody have to say. And they were satisfied. They were satisfied. Good. That's good. Um, it, according even um, in People's Magazine when she did the write up. That's awesome. So if you if you have an option to check out People Magazine, you can check out her write up in the People Magazine as well. You got I, some I that's, that's really what's most important on a day like that. Like, are the mm -hmm. clients satisfied? I think my last question is: if you had to compare your experience with planning Candy's wedding and planning Dr. G and Sweet T's wedding, like, what would you say the comparison would be or the contrast? Well, one wedding started on time. One wedding started three and a half hours late. And Candy Wedding was three and a half hours late because Rico Chappelle was still sewing bridesmaids into their dresses. So it's the difference of having your designers and having things done right early on versus going with friends of the family and letting them do stuff at the last second. <laughs> Um <laughs> oh my god
<laughs> Listen, I really want to keep my candy coated life flair. Okay, I really want to keep it. Like, what I, really I have nothing. It. I have oh, nothing. Johnny, against. I'm being funny. Johnny, I'm really. Saying, I have funny. nothing really against funny. like for well, misconception for some people. I have nothing against anybody. I can be in the same room with those individuals. I already know. Like when you know, and God knows what you done and you haven't done. You can walk any place and don't feel any animosity against anybody. I don't have a, I don't have, I don't have any animosity in my bone against anybody. I do what I'm supposed to do, and I treat people the way I'm supposed to be treated. That's why I'm blessed, and I stay humble. Because outside of all of that stuff, when you do all that extra stuff, don't worry. That karma come get you real quick. <laughs> and I can attest to Johnny's professionalism. I think I mentioned last time Johnny planned my like 25th or 26th like birthday dinner. It was beautiful. Everyone was just uh, taken away by how everything turned out. You were very professional. Everything was done on time. Um, I love that. I had an amazing time. So I can I can say that. I know you do very great work. Thank you. Johnny, tell the people what should we be expecting from you now or in the future and as well as where we can find you. Well, I have I have three shows in the work. Um, Cause your ass like to be on TV. Well, I I you, I, I, you I, be I, in the mix, right? you I'm be in the mix just like me in the mix. <laughs> I made for TV. You might even see me in a movie. Here. Okay, <laughs> come on, I am BD Fish. Come on, <laughs> get your money. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm finalizing my uh, my cookbook and a few other things and my 20th anniversary is next year on july 11th so i'm going to celebrate that in a major way um so you can stay tuned for things about that and yeah feel free to see me soon on um other networks <laughs> is that your 20th <laughs> right. anniversary of your business being open correct how old are you johnny Come on, me ask i'm 35. i oh, started okay. my business when i was 16. they say train up a child Hey, congratulations! That's right, <laughs> Johnny. I want to thank you so much, so much for joining us over here on no in the mix. We thank you so much for sharing your experiences, your thoughts, and commentary. Yeah. And we um sent you off with some love. Y'all say bye to Johnny. Thank you so much, bye, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Please don't thank. Now, when I go over to the candy coated factory and I go to swipe my access card and my access card don't work, we are shutting this show off. We're not doing this no more, okay? <laughs> Make sure you tell her that that was your idea. <laughs> which, I really, which I really can put back on her and say it's really your fault because you're the one who gave me a mic and told me to start talking on your podcast. I, was just, I just came to dance. I, I didn't come for nothing else. Yeah, and you just kept Nothing saying all of what you think and then put the mic in my mouth and then now we're here. Now I want to talk about stuff now. So it's your fault. But no, 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 no. Um, that was fine. I didn't expect all the... Oh my God. He came ready. <laughs> he came ready, okay? Prepare. So, like, Darius, so, like, what do you think from watching this last episode? What was your thoughts on Sweet T's wedding? Um, You know, you could tell that it was a, a wedding that was... Last minute. Yeah, like you could tell that you could tell that some things that happened. I think they tried to play it off like the weather was a factor or something like that. So hearing Johnny kind of shed light on what really happened was um, eye opening. I think that is also indicative of what happens on these shows all the time. Um, you know, one thing is going on, but they want to piss on us and tell us it's raining uh, figuratively and literally in this moment. But I, I thought it was good. One thing that I did think was funny though. I laughed hard. They said that Phaedra wasn't on the list either. This is what Heavenly said. Phaedra wasn't on the list either, but Phaedra said that she brought the preacher. And so if she left, she was taking the preacher. <laughs> and so when I turned on the TV and I saw that the preacher, I said, that's my pastor. My pastor is a classy man. He would not have left the people sitting up there at that altar waiting on them to get married. He would, he would have definitely married those people. So I um I enjoyed it. It was good. Mm -hmm. But my favorite part of the entire episode was seeing Quad in that bathtub at the end of the episode. It was just it just brought me so much joy. Sasha, what's your take on all this? Madness? Um, I I think once again, girl. married to medicine is doing what it needs to do for Bravo. It's doing what it needs to do. I think that um uh Dr. Heavenly has definitely been showing a lot of her personality um this season, and I like it. 
Because I think before, you know, people, they had what they say, what they want to say about her because she would be, you know, sometimes secretive, sometimes open, like she was kind of inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So I do think now, like with this new season, they, they're definitely trying to pop it off. I see every week, I feel like I see more and more people uh, participating in the conversation, especially once I get to scrolling on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, but, you yeah, know, yeah, I like it. I'm here for it. I think Marriage and Medicine, they're doing a great job for it. Bravo. Shout out to Merit to Medicine for doing the things of the things, okay? I mean, we've been trying to tell y'all for 10 years straight that Merit to Medicine is their girl. Listen, I remember when Merit to Medicine first came out, I was like, child, housewives who? Like, from the onset, Merit to Medicine <laughs> was always that girl. Always that girl. Like, they've always been that girl. And so I'm really happy to see the ladies out here doing their thing because, you know, I would say, like, you know, there were some talks like, was Married to Medicine going to continue past season 10? You know, of course, mm -hmm. with all the discussions about Bravo preferring housewives shows and whatnot. But I must say, I think with season 10 and the way they're performing the storylines, the way social media is really galvanizing around their content, I think we can see Married to Medicine lasting another season, another season. Like, I feel like the check's going to still be coming in for a good little minute. If they keep this up, I will say this. I feel bad for Sweet Tea. Like, this young girl's marriage, when she goes to tell her kids this story about her marrying um, their granddaddy. granddaddy. Like, we got to talk about this. Now the granddaddy the baby. <laughs> the granddaddy is the baby. The granddaddy you know, is the baby. I don't, I don't feel bad for her. I, I, still, I still do not feel bad for her. I feel like it was a, a, a shitty move for them to even come back to this show. And so now you're getting the opposite of what you thought you were going to get. They thought they were going to ice quad out because quad ain't married to medicine. And then you, so what you get, you, you get what you get and you don't get upset that you just get what you get. Quad ain't going nowhere. Oh no, quad ain't going nowhere, child. <laughs> they can't, where they going to steal the two? They can't steal the two. They can't steal the She ain't going to go. Something. Quad going to come through for the people each and every time, okay? I'm trying to tell you. She going to come through. Take Greg over quad. You got you got played. 